Hi guys! Hello! Hello! So, welcome back to our uh, second review. Yeah, hello. Yeah. We're on a roll. We're on a roll. Yeah. Average of one review per three months. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're back and we're here with uh, V Wars. This is the game we're going to be reviewing today. Yeah, the next one. Yeah. One of my bargain buys, I got this game for a pound. I, I know, Can you believe it? A pound. I know, you can't go wrong with that. Well, it's, it's obviously worth more than that in the shops, but I just got this because it had a broken box. Yeah. Uh, there's other reasons I bought it as well, yeah. which we'll go into. Yeah, but thank, thank the internet for, <laughs> yeah. for a one pound bargain buy. Good old the internet. Really can't go wrong. Yeah, if you don't care about broken boxes as such, yeah. then there you go. Yeah. Check it out. So, uh, before we get too much into it today, guys, uh, we've had some feedback, and thank you very much for your feedback. We, we, we thrive on feedback. Yes. Um, and uh, one of the things that we had asked was uh, the confusing scoring system for yeah. our review. We did just need to pull some random numbers. Yes, yeah. The reason we uh, have gone with the, the tw out of 12 is because we both give a review out of a D6 dice. Yes, yeah. we, we figured we, I mean, a lot of people don't really care about scores, especially for, for yeah. reviews, but we figured we need some kind of arbitrary scoring system. Yeah, because we're geeks. So, yes. We like to <laughs> arbitrary scoring systems. So, I mean, obviously not geeky enough. We should have done like D24s, D100s, uh, whatever. That's, that's, too, much. that's too much. So, that's yeah, too much. So yeah, we went for a D6. Yeah. We figured we'd do a score each, add them together, and hopefully have a exactly. kind of original score. I, I, I mean, we geeks, we refer them to a D6, but it's basically just a six-sided dice. <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go. So exactly. I yeah. proved my uh, geek credentials right there. Probably yeah, by yeah, yeah. Six. So you'll get and all signs of kinds of dice, don't you? You get yeah. D3, D, D10, D12s. So, so now you know our scoring system is. Yeah. Well. I also want to say I'm sorry it's been so long since our last review. We have, yeah. uh, well, just real life gets in the way, doesn't it? Real life does get in the way. Uh, you know, and thank God, you know, our wives let yeah. us come out and do this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Not that our wives are ever time consuming. Not at all. No, no, no. They're fine. We love you girls. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but um, we. Uh, I'm gonna do, try and do a, a, be a bit more regular with these. We're gonna try and end, yeah, you know definitely. do one a month. Um, hopefully, we're going to be doing another well, video this month hopefully. with yeah. um, smaller game board like, games. We've got another game. Well, yeah, we have some game ideas like yeah. that, so hopefully yeah. it won't be too long. And I did. Uh, I moved house between the last review and this one, which was one of the reasons for the delay. Yeah. So I moved house, we've got nice little places to film. This is for you guys. This is for you guys. This is. And so, if anyone who follows us on Facebook as well, you will see that we've invested in actual lighting gear. So uh, yeah, you indeed. know we're we're upping upping the production value of these these videos. Yeah, obviously the fame is gained to us with this uh, second video. Yeah, so, I know, I know. He wanted his own dressing room. I know. I'm sorry, such a diva. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got we've got a massive subway in the in the kitchen as well. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, without further ado, should we crack on with the review? Yeah, let's crack on. Okay. Well, we're, we're trying to be a bit more structured with the reviews as well. Yeah. Um, so first up, we're going to be talking about the theme. Yeah, Chris. the theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, the theme is kind of what attracted me to this game. Um, I mean, it's kind of, I've heard this advertised as a cross between Pandemic and Battlestar Galactica, which are two of my favourite games ever. Yeah, uh, we, you know, we, we like a bit of Battlestar, don't we? Indeed, indeed. And a bit of Pandemic too. So Pandemic I, is I, good I figured too. I saw these games combined, I saw it was worth a pound, so... Sold. Yeah, you sold. Got a sale right there. I think it's by one of the guys that did Pandemic as well. Yeah, Rob it, Devo. Rob, Rob Devo. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he developed the game, and you can definitely see the influences here. Yes, he hasn't stolen too many, you know, corporate copyrights. <laughs> well, it's his own idea, I suppose, yes. isn't it? So yeah. it could be. But anyway, the theme of this game, I I really enjoy. It's uh, set in uh, the present day, but there's been like the uh, ice caps have melted thanks to global warming. Yeah. Thanks, Trump. Yeah. See, we even get political in our videos. I know, and, that, and current. <laughs> yeah. See, he didn't sign the Paris Agreement, whatever, and now yeah. it's happened. Vampires everywhere. I know, vampires this, this everywhere. Is, yeah. Well, it turned out the polar ice caps have melted, and it's released a vampire kind of virus, which has awakened um, mem many, many people of the population. Yeah. Is that, is that a sentence? It's like a Much of the population uh, has awakened dormant genes, which has sort of, uh, kind of brought out their vampire sides that were yeah. kind of deep in their ancestor. Uh, kind of their genes, their history, and it's it's quite an interesting story as well because there's lots of different types of vampires depending where people are from. So you have like the classic kind of uh, uh, forty days of vamp night vampires here, and you can see what they look like beforehand. Which I love the character cards by the yeah. way. So you can see what they start off as normal humans, yep. and then uh, if they turn into a vampire, 
they flip them over and you can see their new appearance plus what new abilities they have, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's pretty good. So she's a more of a classic kind of rip off your face. 40 Days of Night style vampire. Yep. Uh, while this guy, Brad Mason over here, the Hollywood activist guy, looks like this normally, but when he turns into a werewolf, he goes kind of hairy and kind of looks into like a Oh, a, a, bit, a, a bit like a, a werewolf, werewolf type instead of a vampire. vampire. Yeah, yeah. 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 turns into a werewolf. So yeah, you've got classic vampires, you've got um, werewolf vampires, and then of course you've got this guy, can you use car salesman, that's what he looks like, turns into a lizard. <laughs> so, <laughs> lizard vampires, which is definitely a thing. Um, so anyway, the, uh, the backstory is quite a really nice touch for a game. It actually yeah. comes with like the, the, the co uh, first series of the comics. It was issue zero. Yeah. Came with the game, which kind of set the story for me. Because they've done a whole series of graphic novels. Yeah, I, I actually started buying the uh, comics. Yeah. Because of this game is actually a pretty good story. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I'd recommend checking that out. That's as well. a nice touch. I mean, not many game developers do that. Well, know? no, no. I mean, it, it's set in an existing IP, so yeah, they managed to get issue zero for free. Yeah. In with the game. Yeah. All very good. Yeah. Um, so anyway, vampires have awoken. They're taking over various parts of the country, and obviously the humans are getting a little bit disturbed about this. Yep. And that's where we come in, the players. Yep. We are members of a V Wars task force, yep. kind of um, in charge of taking out the vampire menace, getting, making sure humanity stays on top of the food chain. Yeah, no. Unfortunately, however, one of them is also secretly a vampire. Ah. What a twist! <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's, it's a nice theme. I, you know, I think it's a, 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 a nice touch, nice twist. Um, uh, and we'll hopefully get to see what the gameplay is like. Yeah, indeed. I mean, and the, you can see with the Battlestar Galactica, kind of the hidden traitor loyalty mixes with uh, yeah. Pandemic. Fairly nicely. You've got the vampires popping all over the place, which demons have to deal with. They're kind of like the disease cubes. Yeah, uh, of, of Pandemic. Yeah. yeah, I'll run through more in later, but you're running around all over the globe, trying to get rid of these vampires, and then there's secretly one of you sabotaging from, yeah. from within. Um, overall, the theme is pretty good for me. I quite like the dark theme. I mean, even the humans, which are the good guys, they can win by pretty underhanded methods. Yeah. Which is so because one of the main ways of winning, which I'll explain in more detail later, uh, is by actually planning riots in your own cities and basically just kind of killing humans, if you will. So you make the vampires look bad. If you make the vampires oh, propaganda, and, yeah, because yeah. there's kind of there's PR kind of kind of or news crews filming everything. Yeah. Um, so if you make the vampires look bad enough. If you manage to get rid of all sympathy, sympathy for the vampires, then uh, humans win because they just kind of exterminate all, all vampires. Cool. So even the, the good guys are pretty dark in this 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 series. <laughs> right. I, I kind of prefer this type of vampire to the sparkly emo vampires of Twilight as well. Yes. I yeah. Know. I think any 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 you know self-respecting geek you know doesn't like the sparkly vampires of I mean, Twilight. I'm sure there are some Twilight fans out there. So, yeah. But I'm not one. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not anti Twilight fans, by the way. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to alienate all the Twi Twihards. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, well, so, well, without further ado, shall we go on to our next section? Yeah, should we now discuss the gameplay? Yeah. Just to give you a brief overview of the game, how you win this game as a human, and I'll cover what happens if you're a vampire later. As a human, your job is essentially just stop the vampires from spreading, or you can eliminate them completely. Uh, you've got numerous different win conditions, some can be a little bit confusing, so I'll just quickly run through them. Uh, your standard turn is, say if you're just a normal human, you, uh, you get four actions per turn, and there's a list of actions you can do, and you can do as many as you want, but you can only do four of them, okay? And you can do the same one multiple times if you want to. Okay, that's quite useful then. Yeah. You're not limited to doing certain things. No, no, you can do as many as you want, uh, but there's depending on what faction you are, which I'll cover more in a minute. So, assuming you're a human, say if um, uh, this girl here, you move around, you can move as an action, you can kill the vampire troop as an action, you can drop one of your own faction's troops as an action, or you can place cards in each of the relevant decks, and you can see there's quite a lot of decks around here, yeah. which I'll cover more in a minute. These that happen later, these are the main way you kind of win or lose the game, or these decks that are in each region. Uh, so as a human, to win the game, You've either got to try and plan riots in any all of the vampire control cities. So you have to try and make fights happen there. Yeah. You then win the fight. So say, for example, I, I wanted to take over, let's find a city I can pronounce, New York. So New York here. No, New York. <laughs> New York. The Big Apple. So New York is under vampire control. So say if I was her, I could go here 
I could just plan for a ride to happen in New York, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and then I can add cards to the fight, and if humans win, you destroy the vampire city. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and you move the vampire control marker down, and then brilliant. Good turn for the humans. Yep. Uh, one way you can win is by literally eliminating all vampire cities. Okay. However, more pop up around the board as the game appears, and you can see these vampire troops kind of everywhere. I think if you get to a certain number, it automatically becomes another vampire city. So even if I got rid of New York, you can see that um, kind of Manila's in trouble there. Or Sydney, for example, say if that had more, that would turn into a vampire city and it'll go back up again. Yeah, okay. Got you. All makes sense. <laughs> so far, so good. So uh, that's one way you can win. The other way you can win, uh, where it gets fairly interesting, is by eliminating all the sympathy tokens for the vampire. Yeah. Okay. So when you have fights, there's generally four different outcomes, depending on what city it is, if it's yep. a human one or a vampire one. If it's a human-controlled city, as in, say, New York didn't have one of those tokens, you go here, you can add cards to help to the defence, and depending on how high a score you get with the cards, there's a tricky area, you have to get a certain number, but you don't want to put too many good cards in, otherwise you massacre the other, other forces. And because there's new crew, news crews filming this, it makes you look bad. So, not many games consider the PR aspect. Yeah, and propaganda elements. Yeah, so yeah. If, you, if you massacre the enemy forces, it, it makes you look too brutal, and yeah. you actually gain sympathy for the enemy side. A bit harsh. On the flip side, you can add points to your enemy's forces, okay? <laughs> so, you can help the vampires win fights, they kill loads of humans, it makes them look really bad, and you eliminate sympathy tokens. So, one way humans can win is by getting rid of all sympathy. Okay. So, either kill all vampires, or eliminate sympathy. Yeah. However, <laughs> make them not popular with other, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Just give they just give them a bad PR campaign. Okay, that's mm. all you need to do. Uh, as a vampire, though, I'm gonna get a bit more interesting, and I'll just cover the loyalty cards here. So if you have one of these cards, you're yeah. a standard human. So that's what you have to do: is just kill them all, or make everyone hate them. And that's how you win the game. If you have this card, however, you are the vampire. <laughs> Excellent impression. Mm. Um, you start off undercover, uh, but you can basically sabotage your teammates' efforts. You can play cards that would make the other side win, or make the humans look bad in reverse. You can do that kind of thing. Or well, another thing you can do, where it gets fairly interesting, mm. is some of the other players are not human or vampire. They are infected. Ah, okay. a bit like a sleeper agent in Battlestar Galactica. Yes. It's kind of, yeah, they're, they're basically they're people that have the dormant genes to be a vampire, but they haven't awakened yet. <coughs> so, uh, the vampire chaps, <coughs> once they're outed as a vampire, um, which we'll cover more, probably in a bit more detail later, uh, once they're outed as a vampire, they can basically just not pretend to be a human at all and just run around biting the other people, yeah. okay? And uh, one of the things I actually really like about this game is uh, once you become a vampire, you swap over your token, so you can see that they're there. Flipped, flip Flipped. side there. Yeah. I just think it's a nice touch. I'm impressed by the small little details like that. Yeah. So, say if I was a vampire, I could then run around trying to bite the other players, and if you manage to successfully bite the infected player, yep. they turn to your team. Ah, you've got somebody so, to help you out. Yeah, exactly. So you can gradually uh, turn more than half the board pretty much into your, uh, your team there. And uh, so, for vampires to win, you either take over vampire cities, yeah. Uh, by making sure vampires win fights, and then the city marker moves up, and by increasing vampire sympathy, so making the vampires look really kind of restraining, like we're just peaceful vampires, we just, yeah. we just like eating a few people, we're not, we're not that bloodthirsty, you know, it's only a few people. Not we're at all bloodthirsty. We're, 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 yeah, we're, we're reasonable, we only eat a couple of people, not loads. Uh, you don't just make entire families. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, if you look good, while being a vampire, your sympathy marker goes up, and if the vampire city is under your control and the vampire sympathy tokens meet, then you win. Yeah. Vampires, top of the food chain. There you go. There you go. Uh, vampires also win as being the kind of the time limit of the game as well. You get events per turn, which usually pop up more vampires all over the place. Or there's like elections and stuff. Okay. Uh, there's loads of additional rules to kind of they make one make the game a bit easier for one side or another in yeah. different regions. And uh, these go through the game turn by turn, and if you run out of them, the vampires win by default. 
Um, so that's how they win. Okay. So what? Are, so what are these sections? Here? Oh yeah, the, I'm just finally covered the riot sections. There's a lot of rules for this game, which we'll go over more in a minute. But the riots are where the main kind of cities are taken, and where you mainly defend your cities from. So say for example, there was going to be a riot in Europe, and one thing I do like about the game is you can actually see where the next riots are going to happen. Yeah. So there's going to be a riot in London this turn. Okay. Yeah. So say for example, I was human. So we should move her off there. So if I was this guy and I was human, I can move over to Europe. It doesn't have to be in London, it just has to be in the uh, same region. Yep. I can then place some of my cards into this riot deck, which is about to resolve. Okay. So say if I was a human, I would want to play my good human cards, which are indicated by white numbers at the top. Yep. Okay. So if I want the human troops to win this fight, and remember, you can even play red cards if you are a human, if you want the vampires to win, you can play um, the red numbers instead. So, reds help vampires, whites help humans. Yep. So, assuming I just want to defend this city, because it's currently a human city, I can play in my cards. So, say for example, I've got, I've got quite a good couple of cards here. I could play in those two there, into the deck. It gets shuffled, and then we uh, count them up and uh, see who wins the fight. Yep. Where it gets tricky is though you have to aim for a certain number, and this is where it confused us quite a few times. Um, you want to get six or seven points for your side. Yeah. No more than that, because if you get more than that, then you gain sympathy for the other team. Okay. Yeah. Now, it, am I right? As soon when you're revealing them, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I played. Yeah. Um, you, as soon as you get to your target number, that's it. You don't deal with yes, cards. Yes. So out. I mean, I haven't shuffled these. Just as an example. Yeah. So say so I've done all my actions. The right happens. You can't say so two points to the humans. Five points to the humans. That's seven. That's great. So I've got six or seven. I've got one of the two there. The fight wins. It's a good defense for the humans. So yep. I can either eliminate sympathy or I can place the city under martial law, yep. which means vampires can never go there again. Actually, that's another way the humans can win, actually. If they get six cities under martial law, yep. they, they win completely. Yep. So that's a perfect defense for the humans. However, if it kept going, oh, there's a red one, so that would take one off. If, for example, I'd gone over, say if there was like uh, 8 or 9, 10 points for the humans, then I win the fight, but it's a bit too overhanded, a bit too brutal. Yeah, a bit so too that's brutal. where you would gain sympathy yeah. for the other team. And uh, these riot decks are used quite a lot, actually, as well. Yeah. Uh, like, there's events that happen, like, uh, like elections, and, uh, or epidemics, and they typically use these decks as well. You just count them up and see which team's got most points. Yeah. And that, in a nutshell, a very kind of brief nutshell, <laughs> but that's a good overview of the rules. There's, there's the, the standard yeah. gameplay there. I mean, obviously there are additional elements uh, to it that we haven't completely covered, yeah. um, but uh, this is a very kind of brief overview of, of some of the base mechanics for the game. Indeed. But yeah. So, that's brilliant. Okay, so what now? Is this the components? Yeah, we're going to talk about the components of the game. Yeah, this is the bit I really like about the game. I can use my kind of design eye yeah, this is, this and be a, a bit critical Chris about is a the uh, special area. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I do, I've done graphics and animation yeah. and, and all those kind of elements. Hence, I'm the production guy for these <laughs> videos. Um, yeah, sure. And you know, I, I must admit, I, I do like the pieces, the pieces in this game. Yeah. Um, you know, the card think, cutouts are excellent. The, the player cards are good. I think they're a bit big. Yeah, they're a bit comically Probably. oversized. If Come on, is, so. yeah, you could they could have <laughs> made them a bit smaller and maybe introduced a couple of extra characters. Uh, but a from a from the design point of view, they've got great. The art works good, and it's consistent with what's in the comic book as well. Yeah, the comic book uh, art, in, you know, is very much reflected in the style. Um, uh, which we can probably you know show you in a bit more detail, uh, uh, you know, a little bit later. Uh, but it, it does look nice. Um, the uh, the like I say the cardboard pieces are good. The cards are good. The card graphics are, are nice and clear. Yeah. The writings and numbers are quite nice and clear. The only thing that's a bit of a letdown for me, I would say, from a component point of view, is the actual board itself. Yeah, I, I have to. Agree uh, there. It's dark. Uh, it's all red. Well, the theme is blood. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand that the theme is blood and vampires, uh, but the tones of colours. Uh, you, you probably can't make it out, but the the different patterns of red to pick out the different regions. I think, yeah. and the patterns are so unless you're you know color blind or you know any kind of short sightedness, uh, um, you know it's difficult to make out. It all merges 
together far too easily. I think, you know, maybe if they enlarge the sections and maybe reduce, you know, some of the dead, dead space around the board, it might have been a bit clearer, mm -hmm. but it's just difficult to pick out. But other than that, the elements are really good. I think the graphics on the box are great as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's across the board, it's uniform. Um, the biggest letdown for me is is the player pieces. Um, the, 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 from from the a commercial, soldiers. you know, the little soldiers from a component point think, of view. I think they're okay, though. I do reckon the vampires look a bit more like zombies well, than actual vampires. But it, it's the, you know, it's because they're they're the actual pieces. Um, when you're in a particular zone, like Manila, for example. Oh um, yeah, that, I, it, I agree. It, I think they, can, they do it, overfill. It, the, it can overfill the section. That's going to be one of my criticisms again. It's mainly the board. I think yeah. it's. A little bit poorly designed. It can be really hard to tell what region is which sometimes. Yeah, it is. And like I was going to mention, uh, Manila. Like you can see, here, there's quite a few troops on top of that, and it's vampire control there yeah. as well. I mean, how was all that supposed to fit yeah. in that one? That I would have thought it, little kind of, little tokens would have been better. Maybe or just maybe, maybe little circular tokens or little cubes or something. Not that I'm trying to say it's like pandemic, but mm -hmm. it can get crowded uh, with these pieces, and I don't think these were necessary. Uh, that and I think the quality of them is not great. Yeah, the, it's the, the only element of the game. The, 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 the soldiers themselves are fairly cheap. I don't think you could paint them. They're not really that no. detailed, but they're functional. Um, the the map itself, I think, is the weakest area, like you said, because just some areas, because you your character can move region to region. Mm. Sometimes it's easy, like North America, South America. Yeah, really easy to tell that. Apart. But in the cramped sections like Tokyo and Manila, that's yeah, where it's but when gone. you get to Europe and kind of Asia, they all kind of blur into one, and it's like, can I move from here all the way down there, or can I only move to this section? Yeah, it can be very confusing. Yeah. But like I said, likewise, other than that, you know, the, the graphics are great. Yeah, I, I really like the, the small touches, like you've got just different versions of each character. Yeah. You've got Tara Reed there, and then you've got Tara Reed as a vampire. Yeah, pretty much. She's still pretty, much, pretty hot, though. <laughs> it's, like she should, it's not <laughs> Tara Reed. She right. looks like Tara Reed. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. Tower Raid lookalike, yes. Yeah, as, as a vampire. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Um, so, components, mixed bag for me. I like the artwork, I agree with you. Yeah. I think the player tokens are nice. Yeah. The character cards are a bit comically huge, but they they do the job. Yeah. Cards are okay, but the board, uh, that, that caused us a lot of frustration, yeah. actually. Yeah, it has, yeah. Other than that, I think we're pretty good. So, yeah. guys, it's now final thoughts on the game. Um, final thoughts. Yeah. So, uh, did you want to start? Well, overall, I wanted to like this game. It's got the two elements. Well, two games I really like. I, was like, I think they're kind of an inspiration for it. But, well, um, possibly we don't know. Maybe the game designers may possibly. get in contact with us and it, tell us. It, it, yeah, indeed. Well, it reminds me of both of them, but it's not quite as compelling and as good as either of them. No, I don't think. Uh, yeah, and there's there's little bits that just kind of irritate me slightly. Okay, like, so what irritates you? Well, um, it's like if you are the traitor, if you are the vampire, for example, um, I, I there isn't really much incentive to stay undercover. Um, in a lot of games like Dead of Winter or Battlestar Galactica, as we keep name dropping, or any other kind of traitor game, generally you're kind of motivated to stay undercover mm. just to uh, kind of. So dissent, mistrust, all that kind of thing. Yeah. While in this game, it's kind of it's more in your interest just to out yourself as soon as possible, and then just go around biting the other players to find your teammate. Hang on a second. This this almost sounds like maybe your top tip. Oh yeah, I suppose it is. It's Danny's top tip of the video. <laughs> <laughs> we need to actually get that recorded. Yeah, we do. Just yeah. to maybe do a single. You know. Yeah. That'd be good. Danny's top tip. Exactly. Maybe the remix. Uh, but yeah, if you're the vampire, um, essentially the only penalty you have, so say for example, we're just going to give you like a reasonable amount of sympathy here, okay? Say, as an example. As an example. Say if you are the vampire, as an action, you can choose to reveal yourself as a vampire and then you can do the more of the, the evil actions like sign up more little vampire troops all over the place and bite the other players. The only penalty you have for doing that is you lose half of your sympathy, okay? Now, that isn't too bad, really. It depends on how much sympathy you've got, because you gain it back or lose it pretty quickly. Um, so typically I would just do that pretty much in my first action. However, my top tip, if you don't want to risk losing half of it, um, you know if I mentioned that in a riot you want to get six or seven points for, for your side to have a good victory. Yeah. Okay. If you're a vampire 
and you have a good vampire victory, defending a good vampire city, good honourable vampire city, then you can reveal for free, no penalty. Yeah. So you, if you add six sympathy tokens there, I could basically, as soon as I have the first good vampire victory, which happens, it happens fairly often, often in our games, I would just immediately go Mwah! and become a vampire. Yeah. No penalty lots, I would then just run around biting the other people, and eventually you'll outnumber the humans, and they stand no chance. Yeah. Um, so that's just a, a slight nitpick there. I prefer games where you actually, even though you still have stuff to do if you get outed, I think you should be more incentivized to stay undercover. Yeah. Yeah, and there's not that much incentive. We both kind of came up with this top tip, <laughs> uh, but it's your thing to reveal the top tip. Yeah, you don't want to steal my thunder, do you? No, I don't want to steal your thunder at all. <laughs> So um, yeah, uh, I, I was set up to like this game as well. I mean, like again, I, don't know, I like Pandemic. I like the, the, the idea behind it. You know, yeah. um, I like the idea of you know the hidden agenda and the hidden the sleeper agent incense incense uh, with, with regards to Battlestar and other hidden games like Dead yeah. Winter and things I, like that. I, I love social deduction games. That's yeah, one of my favorite yeah. Types. Um, I, I think uh, in overall uh, there are elements that overcomplicate it. Uh, I I think if they kept you know maybe taken away these deck areas, it would have well, simplified. Yeah, uh, maybe it just, just it, have less. It's there's a lot going on. Too many rules uh, overcomplicate it, which I mean, suck the enjoyment out of it. For I me. mean, I've played this three times, and each time we had to refer to the rule book quite yeah. a lot because yeah. uh, the rules aren't the best written as well. And it does estimate that um, you can play the game in sixty minutes. Yeah, yeah we can no, never fit this no. game in sixty minutes. Three hours, never, and. Um, Average. It's just that like the rule book. There's some things that like we had to double check constantly. Um, it's like it, it never mentioned shuffling the cards, no. which seems strange to me. So after I add cards, you would thought you'd have to shuffle, but the, yeah. the rules don't, don't mention it. So yeah. we just kind of assume you did and we shuffled yeah. anyway. Um, but it's there is a lot going on. Mm. The score constantly goes up and down. Um, and like you said, Chris, I think. The average time for us was probably about three hours, yeah. Yeah. Uh, two to three, I think. My but first game took about four hours. Yeah, but on the flip side of that, once you've got lots, you know, uh, or four players that know the game yes. and know it well enough and have played it five or six times, yeah, yeah, then you you know it will flow quicker. Um, but it's not one of those games that you can quickly just get out with a couple of new friends who've yeah. not played it before. And you've got it. You'll end up taking half an hour just to explain what goes on to them, uh, and and that's the downside with it. Mm. Once you've got a group of people that have played it regularly, you could probably get a game done in maybe an hour and a half. Maybe. Um, uh, and and it is enjoyable. Uh, we're, yeah. we're not completely and utterly slating the I, game. I think it's a fair game. I it's think. a fair game. Yeah, it, exactly. It, it's good. Um, like I said, I think it is. It's quite a, quite a sharp learning curve, just because there's so many, so much going on. There's multiple yeah. different ways you can win. There's multiple decks going on. You've got different laws which can come into effect, which complicate things even further. Yeah. You've got riots. You've got events which are barely covered in yeah. the gameplay section. You've got hundreds of troops popping up all over the place. The map gets really crowded. Um, I, I feel this game was quite intense for a lot of people I played this with. Yeah. And when it took about three or four hours. There's just games I would have preferred to have played instead. Yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, I I would recommend this maybe if you have like a vampire themed night or something. Yeah. or you you, you like vampire themed games. Yeah, I mean, because anyone who likes you know the premise and the idea about it, you're still getting a lot of enjoyment out of the game. Yeah, um, it's just from from a, a, a quick ability to be able to learn it and play it. It's just not. You've got to really read the rule book. Yeah, um, and I mean, and for people who aren't very rulesy. Mm -hmm. It's not for you, but if you like your rule, you know, you, you know, heavily rule-based games, you're gonna love it. You are yeah, absolutely gonna sure. love it. You if, really are. Yeah, if you had some people that just dedicate the time to learning everything, yeah. uh, just getting the hang of aim, aiming, kind of manipulating all these riot decks. Yeah. Because you've got like uh, decks all over the place. You can plan future riots. There's just a, a lot going on. Um, and like I said, I I feel like it's trying to combine both a great traitor game and the kind of management, cube management, even though the troopers in this case yeah. are pandemic. And I feel it's just kind of struggling to do both of them because yeah. it's, it's got too much on its plate. All right. So well, without further ado, shall we give our scores? Well, I, I like this game, but I just feel like it loses 
it loses kind of pride of place compared to other games. I think if I had to play a game with my friends, I would pick something else over this. So it's not bad, uh, but I'm going to give this a three. Okay, so you've given it a three. Yeah. Oh, I'm giving it a four. Okay. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. I yeah. think if um, if you're a vampire enthusiast, if you love the story this is setting, yeah. maybe a four from me. Yeah. But I think to the average uh, kind of person that's not familiar with V-Wars, there isn't obsessed with vampires, yeah. I would give this a three out of six. Yeah. So in all, so it's seven out of ten. Yes. Excellent. Seven out of twelve. <laughs> seven out of twelve. See, proof that... You can enjoy games despite not being able to count from Christo. Clearly, yes. Yeah, it's very Clearly. Good. 7 out so, of 12. 7 out of 12. I think that's a respectable score. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. So, um, again, thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time to watch. Um, where I'm sure I'd we hope that you enjoy watching these as much as we enjoy making them. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, as usual, uh, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Um, it gets hashtag Diary of a Lincoln Geek. Um, and please feedback and let us know what you think. And uh, again, you know, criticism. Yeah, we like criticism. We're, we're open for feedback. We're, yeah. we're doing this uh, mainly just for fun. Until, yeah. until we get rich and famous. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then it's all about the money. Yeah. But for now, it's about the fun. Yeah. So if we, um, if you want us to, I mean, even if you have any review, review suggestions, yeah. let us know or anything. Yeah. We actually have a plan for the next review, though. Yes, exactly. The next game that we're going to be reviewing is. Da, 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 da. Sons of Anarchy! Yay. Watch this space, we're going to be having Sons of Anarchy coming very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone who likes the, the TV show Sons of Anarchy... Even if you don't watch it, yeah, it's fine. It's a good game, it's so good. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll be reviewing that next. So again, Excellent. watch this space and thank you very much guys. This is you know, Chris and Dan from Diary of the Lincoln Geek. Goodbye! Goodbye!